we have uncovered so many important structures that prove this temple functioned as a temple during the time of Queen Cleopatra and the Greek pharaohs. What the researchers believe to be the tomb of Cleopatra has just been discovered. And even though it is what they have been searching for for a long time, it contains the truth about the pyramids. Queen Cleopatra has captured the minds of scholars for countless centuries, but unfortunately, they have been unable to find where she was buried until recently when archaeologists announced that it has been found. However, this discovery has led to even more shocking phenomena, as the discovery of Cleopatra's tomb revealed the truth about the pyramids. What did archaeologists find about the pyramids? Come with us as we explore how the tomb of Cleopatra was discovered and the truth it revealed about the pyramids. Cleopatra's final moments. Wait, who doesn't know about Cleopatra? Maybe a few people have not exposed themselves to history or even civilization. No matter who you face for answers, they definitely have something to say about Cleopatra. But whatever they say, be sure it is not deep, as what we know about Cleopatra are things written after her death. According to Plutarch, an ancient Greek writer, who was one of the first people to give us a written document about the final moments of Cleopatra's reign. The queen's death occurred because of her love for her husband. The Roman general Mark Anthony was Cleopatra's husband, and he fell on his sword on the day that Augustus and his Roman forces invaded Egypt and captured the great city of Alexandria. As he drew his last breath, Cleopatra was right beside him. After Anthony's death, Cleopatra laid him to rest in her mausoleum. She waited for two weeks before she entered the mausoleum again to make offerings. She then poured libations, a drink offered to a deity for offering, with her hands, and soon she passed away. All of that was according to what Plutarch wrote. Nobody knows what happened for real, but the most popular belief is that she got an asp to bite her. We all also believe that after Cleopatra died, she was buried right next to Mark Anthony in the mausoleum. It was a sequence of bitter days for the family as Anthony's son, Marcus Antonius Antilles, and Cleopatra's son, Ptolemy XV Caesar, were both killed by the Roman forces. It is speculated that their bodies were also placed in the mausoleum with their parents, but hey, none of those people who lived then are alive today. While researchers are looking for Cleopatra's tomb, knowing that Cleopatra and Anthony were buried next to each other in a mausoleum is a good start. Now the question is, where is the mausoleum? I'll help. Probably lost together with Alexandria. Researchers don't seem to want to believe as they continued in their quest for Cleopatra's mausoleum, and this search led them to various discoveries to compensate for their long years of hard work. Two Mummies at Tapos Iris Magna While the researchers were searching for Cleopatra's tomb, they stumbled upon two mummies at Tapos Iris Magna. These mummies date back to the time of Cleopatra, and because of how we believe Cleopatra and Anthony were buried, many people think this discovery is sensational, believing that the mummies belong to Cleopatra and Anthony. The tomb has been sealed for 2,000 years, and the mummies were found covered in gold leaf. This signifies that the mummies belong to rich and powerful people, as only people of that status were buried that way. While some believe that the mummies might be for Cleopatra and her husband, some believe that the individuals might have a close relationship with Cleopatra herself. The mummies were difficult to identify as they have been damaged by water and other natural factors, and because of that, they were x-rayed. The result of the x-ray showed that the mummies belonged to a man and a woman. After the result was announced, some people speculated that they were priests who played important roles in keeping the pharaohs in power. One of the mummies even has a gold leaf painting of a scarab, which was a symbol of rebirth. Headless Statue of King Ptolemy IV For so many years of research, no one has ever been able to find the tomb of any Ptolemaic pharaoh, including Cleopatra. But as the two mummies were discovered, researchers saw it as a very significant discovery. Many archaeologists believe that Cleopatra's tomb is at the Tapos Iris Magna, but specifically, Dr. Kathleen Martinez holds that belief more strongly than anyone else. She had been leading excavations at Tapos Iris Magna for over 14 years, and she never stopped because she strongly believed she would one day find what she's been looking for. 
As of now, only a small part of Tapos Iris Magna has been explored, and there they found a burial chamber containing two mummies. On the chamber was a limestone slab, which was removed with a chisel and hammer, which in turn revealed a small hole through which the researchers were able to see the mummies. On top of that, they discovered a headless statue that belonged to King Ptolemy IV, one of Cleopatra's ancestors. A foundation plate was also retrieved at the site, which shows that the temple was once dedicated to goddess Isis, Cleopatra and Isis. During the time Cleopatra reigned as a queen in Egypt, she proclaimed herself as the human incarnation of Isis and was also considered to be so by her folks. Well, this next discovery might just show the direct relationship between the two. Researchers discovered over 200 coins bearing Cleopatra's name and face at the temple altar. At the altar, the priest made offerings to the god. These coins are direct links between Cleopatra and Isis, but that's not all. It also depicts the image of Cleopatra which is not absolutely what we have imagined and seen. Though we can't say for sure if that was what Cleopatra looked like, Researchers believe that it is how she would have wanted to be seen as the coins were made under her instructions directly. These coins have a lot of usefulness, as they also are helpful to date archaeological sites. It also shows that the coins might be the currency spent during the reign of Cleopatra. These finds clearly show that there was a relationship between the temple and Cleopatra, which is also a step forward in finding Cleopatra's tomb, Road to Cleopatra's Tomb. But what better time to bring you this discovery if not now? So fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be an amazing ride to the tomb of Cleopatra. The search for Cleopatra's tomb began about 20 years ago. And it's been a tough ride since, but now it seems it all paid off. They discovered a tunnel of 1,305 meters, which is 13 meters below ground level. This tunnel was named a geometric miracle by scientists because of its amazing architecture. After this site was excavated, it revealed the location of a huge religious center that is made up of three sanctuaries and a sacred lake. In the tunnel, over 1,500 objects were found, which include busts, golden pieces, statues, and a massive collection of coins depicting Alexander the Great, Queen Cleopatra, and the Ptolemies. But of all these discoveries, the most important of all is the intricate network of tunnels that led to the Mediterranean Sea and underwater structures. Why Cleopatra's tomb must be found. Since 2005, researchers have dedicated themselves to locating this tomb, and the reason is simple. Cleopatra was not a regular queen. She was an icon who was admired and also a victim of Roman propaganda, which is believed to be an aim at the destruction of her beautiful image. She was possibly one of the first women to study formally at the Alexandria Museum, which was very uncommon at the time, but she made sure she was present at the cultural center of her time. But in the final moments before she died, she allowed an asp to bite her, which made her a tragic character too. Since that time, the tale has been circulating all over the world and has been passed from one generation to another. This caused wonder, as many have found it hard to believe the story. Discovering this tomb would clear every single doubt about the history of Cleopatra. The discovery of this tunnel shows it may be the road that leads to the tomb. Hopefully, this discovery will bring us closer to uncovering the lost tomb of this historical figure, especially now that little clues have led the archaeologists to believe that Cleopatra's resting place was located in the Temple of Osiris in the ruined city of Tapos Iris Magna where the Nile River meets the Mediterranean. The most important hint was the name itself. As said earlier, Cleopatra was considered to be the human incarnation of the goddess Isis, and also Anthony was considered to be that of the god Osiris. Osiris was married to Isis, while Anthony was also married to Cleopatra, so it could be possible that Cleopatra was buried with her husband in the temple of Tapos Iris Magna, of all the 20 temples that were studied in Alexandria, the Temple of Tapos Iris Magna is the only one that satisfies all the necessary conditions. The Temple of Tapos Iris Magna, dedicated to Isis and Osiris, would have probably been a place of significant religious symbolism to Cleopatra's life and death. 
Plus, the temple's location is ideal because it's within the ancient limits of Alexandria, but outside the area controlled by the Romans at the time. The common knowledge is that Cleopatra was afraid that the Romans would destroy her remains, so it is reasonable to think that she would have entrusted her body to a group of people and a place where she knew she would be protected after her death. If this speculation is right, then the priests of the temple most likely hid her body away from the Romans and kept it safe for eternity. The temple of Tapos Iris Magna was also a crucial religious center with important political significance. Plus, it was associated with Egyptian mysteries. According to the ancient writer Plutarch, at a time when Alexander the Great was going to Siwa Oasis, he had to stop by the temple. The search and more discoveries. A team of researchers started their search for Cleopatra's tomb within the Tapasiris Magna Temple. They began by excavating both inside and outside the temple and came upon various architectural components distributed across different levels. The teams were able to see the limestone room's foundations, which were built parallel to the north wall. Each room has floorings done with limestone and also has a pottery vessel used to hold oil from the church used for blessings. Below one of the walls is a statue of royalty without a head. At the second level, the team found architectural elements that dated back to the late Roman era. The level was right on a staircase and had a rectangular building with three differently sized rooms. At the end of the building's eastern wall, a new entrance was also discovered leading to a hall with two small rooms on the two sides. No one knows what the rooms are used for, but they were separated by a tunnel that ended in a door opening to another large room. This large room may have been a home for the commander of the Roman camp when it was initially built. And at the third level, there was limestone where the team found five steps made of the rock, which led to a courthouse. The fourth level contained the foundations of residences that were most likely used by the Ptolemaic temple priests at some point. This area also had a group of ovens, with a stellar containing ten lines of Greek inscription discovered in front of one of them. It is important to note that the temple had a foundation similar to that of a rectangular building that could have served as a chapel for the temple gods. An altar located on the western end of the building led to the sanctuary, where they came upon the Chapel of Isis. They also found the arm of a statue representing Apis. This further pointed to the fact that the temple was dedicated to the divine triad of Osiris, Isis, and Horus. This temple was steeped in details that proved it was wholly dedicated to the gods Cleopatra revered so deeply. Skeletons in the Tunnel one of the shafts in the temple had niches that were cut into the rock used as stairs, and as they dug deeper into a depth of 25 meters, a skeleton was found alongside a collar made of gold. It is believed that the skeleton belonged to a man who was left inside the shaft and was never found. They continued to dig onto 28 meters where another skeleton was found. If you think that's all, you're wrong. Further excavation. 35 meters below the temple revealed the third skeleton which belonged to a woman that died while giving birth to a child. The skeleton was holding onto the statue of Alexander the Great and wearing a ring on the other hand. She also had a leg chain with an amulet of a snake. And now to the final shaft that revealed a possible entrance to a tomb. The researchers tried to go in but they could not because of the high water table. But within the debris of the shaft, they did find a great number of Rhodian amphora with seals that contained the name of the factory, as well as those of the priests. These vessels were used to transport famous Rhodian wine, alabaster, head of a queen. Near the last shaft, several rooms were discovered. In one of those rooms, about one meter below the Byzantine floor level, scientists discovered an alabaster head of a queen. After the head was well examined, the researchers discovered that the style of the head indicated that the bust belonged to Cleopatra. This was determined because of the images of Cleopatra found on the coins discovered in the temple. When the coins' images were compared to the bust, there were great similarities. Although researchers are still far from discovering the tomb, the excavations show many other significant findings revealing the truth about the temple's history as well as the lives and deaths of those buried within. Cleopatra may be underwater. As much as we might want to believe that Cleopatra's tomb is in the Tapos Iris Magna, 
A group of experts have concluded that it is unlikely that Cleopatra was buried in the temple. Many scholars believe that Cleopatra was buried between Alexandria, and as we know, that era has been buried deep underwater, and while we might choose to stay with a theory, there's no evidence to show that the tomb is anywhere in the two locations. What about the busts and other evidence, right? We can't really use them as evidence because they are common artifacts, and we have seen similar artifacts in other places in the country. We have imagined it being in the temple now. Let's imagine the tomb in Alexandria. If the water never washed it away, then it might have been burnt up at a time. And if it wasn't burnt, it was probably robbed a long time ago, a time when cave thefts are rampant. Now let's imagine the tomb survived all of these. What about weather, cultural change, or natural ruin? It would be supernatural to see the tomb in one piece. Currently, archaeologists are not looking for Cleopatra's tomb underwater, but in the temple. And while it may sound impossible, she was the last ruler of the Ptolemy dynasty, which means her lineage could be traced back to Ptolemy Sota, one of Alexander the Great's generals. Though many writers have referenced Alexander's tomb, it has not been discovered as well as other Ptolemaic rulers. There's every chance that Cleopatra's tomb would be somewhere near her predecessors. This means, if any of the Ptolemaic rulers' tombs are discovered, there's a chance to find Cleopatra's tomb, and if not, we might just never really find Cleopatra's tomb. And whether we find Cleopatra's tomb or not, it doesn't seem like the world will ever stop talking about this queen and all that surrounds her. This also means the world may never stop in their quest of finding the lost tomb of Cleopatra. With all being said and revealed about Cleopatra, her life, death, and tomb, what is your thought on this discovery? What side of the scientists' theories do you choose to believe? Let us know in the comment section. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.